If you have ever Googled coconut oil and skincare, specifically for acne prone skin, you've probably come across one of two scenarios. Number one, web articles telling you that it is highly comedogenic, acne causing, and a four on that scale, meaning it'll probably break you out. And on the other hand, a lot of people say that coconut oil is like a miracle oil, amazing at hydrating the skin and has actually helped with many hormonal acne breakouts. So what's the truth? Today, we're going to get empowered by the science of our skincare and dive into what all of this actually means for us. If you have acne prone skin, someone has probably told you to stay away from coconut oil. On the comedogenic scale, it is listed as a four. The comedogenic scale is essentially this little rating system that rates products or certain ingredients on how likely they are to cause breakouts. When we look at the science, some of the ingredients here are actually excellent for acne. And a lot of people have been saying that coconut oil cleared their skin. Yet at the same time, other people say that it breaks them out tremendously. And this comedogenic scale says that it's a four on a scale of one to five. So what's the actual truth? Well, it's interesting because the research doesn't actually point to the results that we've been told. And the science of the skincare might be a little bit flawed. So let's talk about exactly what's going on and the three main issues. The first main issue is that the comedogenic scale isn't actually legit. About half of it is BS, and we're gonna dive into what that means for coconut oil. Secondly, not all coconut oil is created the same. And third, the pathology of acne. What's actually happening in our skin? And do the triglycerides, the little fats in coconut oil, actually get where they need to go in order to penetrate the skin, hydrate, or do any damage or any good? Let's talk about the first main problem, which is this comedogenic scale. Comedogenic means likely to cause acne or clog pores. And dermatologists and scientists started studying specific ingredients in products about 50 years ago to see if they would cause blackheads or acne lesions. Now here's the problem. They did a lot of this testing on rabbit ears. And I've got a question. Does my face look like a rabbit ear to you? <laughs> now there's a couple of problems with that. The first is that rabbit ears are more sensitive than human skin, meaning that if we test something on rabbits and it causes a breakout, that doesn't mean it's going to be likely to cause a breakout on me because our skin is so different. Also, rabbit ears react faster. And also, the sebum, the actual oil in ours and animal's skin, is going to be different. Sebum is the oil in our skin, and it's made of different things, such as waxy esters, it's got some triglycerides in there, and it's also got some squalene. Animals have sebum too, but the thing is that the amount of these different ingredients within the sebum are going to vary. Nonetheless, about 50 years ago, this comedogenic scale was done, and a bunch of scientists started testing ingredients on rabbits and deciding what was going to break out the general population. Well, it was back in the late 1970s, I think like 1978 or 1977 or something like that, that the American Academy of Dermatology actually put their hands up and said, hey, this isn't always right. <laughs> this comedogenic scale could be right, but it's also not that accurate. They did concur that if a product is a one on that scale, probably not gonna cause breakouts in humans. But they retested and re-looked at some of the fours and the fives and said, these things that are supposed to cause acne really might not. And unfortunately, that study has been referenced by so many skincare products. If you turn around the labels on your skincare, sometimes it even says non-comedogenic. But the truth is, unless that's been tested on a human, it's kind of BS because we don't exactly know how it's gonna go. And the truth is that even if it is tested on a human, we have to look at the conditions of that testing, acne pathology, and if these ingredients are actually getting into the layers of the skin that they need to penetrate. But before we discuss that, let's talk about how not all coconut oil is created equal. When you buy coconut oil at the store, you tend to see two different options. You see virgin or non-virgin, but there's actually a lot more that goes into that. Coconut oil is not a pure substance. It's not a specific molecule, such as glycolic acid. It's a mix of different things that create this oil. And depending on which coconut oil you get, they can actually be extraordinarily different. Think about it like baking a pie. Just because my mom bakes a pumpkin pie that is delicious, doesn't mean that my pumpkin pie is going to be any good. We might have used the same ingredients, but maybe one of us used a different amount. At the end of the day, it's still a pumpkin pie, but it could be extraordinarily different. 
What if I threw in salt instead of sugar? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Let's compare the composition of coconut oil. If we look at it, there's a bunch of different things in here. The most abundant oil, which is usually from 40 to 50%, is called lauric acid. But check it out. There's also myristic acid in there, there's oleic acid, there's pomatolytic acid, and depending on which coconut oil you're getting, these are in varying degrees. And whether or not coconut oil is helpful or harmful, specifically to acne prone skin, comes down to these oils. If we look at the science behind it, lauric acid is actually great for acne prone skin. There were specifically studies done in 2009 and 2016 that kind of explored this. And lauric acid in one of these studies actually broke down the cell membrane, meaning it actually killed the acne bacteria that causes breakouts, which is amazing. But then the question becomes, can this lauric acid actually penetrate into the skin? Unfortunately, the molecule of lauric acid is a bit too big to get into the skin where it needs to go. And when you think about it, our skin is always producing sebum. So anything that goes in might get pushed out. So some scientists did try to micronize this, meaning make it super tiny. And they actually coupled it with PEGs, which are an ingredient that you might often see in your foundations. But when they were able to get it small enough, it actually killed the cell wall of the acne bacteria. And the study actually reported that the lauric acid was more effective than benzoyl peroxide. And if you're an acne sufferer, you know what benzoyl peroxide is. The good thing about lauric acid is it has less side effects as well. Unlike benzoyl peroxide, it doesn't stain your pillowcases, it doesn't stain your favorite shirt, and it doesn't cause the itching, irritation, and burning that is often associated with BP. This specific study was done with the intention of helping people with acne, but also creating a drug or a prescription or a therapy um, to get the lauric acid into skin. But here's the question. If it's not small enough to penetrate, is it actually going to help in everyday life? And also, what about those other compounds in there? For instance, myristic acid. This is actually a compound that has been shown to cause breakouts in many people. So this is one that in actual humans could be an issue. When we look at oleic acid, most associated with olive oil, it could be helpful, but it could be harmful. It actually decreases the skin's barrier function with an impact on trans epidermal water loss. Trans meaning across, epidermal meaning the epidermis in your skin, and water loss meaning water loss. So it could actually reduce the ability that your skin has to moisturize and protect itself. So when you look at some of these on their own, they seem pretty scary. You wouldn't want to go near them. But when you look at lauric acid, it kind of looks amazing and it might be great for your skin. And that's when you have to remember, coconut oil contains a mixture of these. And depending on the composition of your specific coconut oil, it could have a ton of lauric acid and hardly anything of everything else. Or it could have up to 20% of myristic acid with a little bit less of the lauric acid, which would be bad for skin. And additionally, can the body even use these oils? When we are putting any oil on the skin, we are applying triglycerides to our skin. Triglycerides are that three-tailed little funky chemistry guy that you might have seen in class. Well, the thing about triglycerides is that they can be broken down or put back together depending on their structure. Now, here's the thing. The most benefit our skin will get is from free fatty acids. Free fatty acids are acids that have been broken up, that can actually penetrate more readily, that can bind to different molecules, basically do their work better. And in the acne studies, the free fatty acids were claimed to be the thing that helped the most. In order to break down a free fatty acid, an enzyme needs to be present. Pretty interesting, our skin actually has lipases, the enzymes that it takes to break down this triglyceride so that we can get the free fatty acid. And the P. acnes bacteria actually creates some of these enzymes. So does our skin actually translate these oils into free fatty acids? Unfortunately, that depends on your genetics. For some people's skin, yes. For other people's skin, no. It also depends on where it's applied, if it's the face, the chest, or the back, and there are a whole bunch of other factors as well. And even if the skin's enzymes were good enough at breaking down triglycerides into free fatty acids, would it actually be enough to have an impact on our skin? At the end of the day, coconut oil in particular seems to have a pretty big molecule that is hard to penetrate. And you have to have the right genetics and the right skin conditions in order to break down the ingredients in here that are actually going to be the most beneficial. So what does that mean for those of us with acne? Many people who have acne do need to use a moisturizer. The reason why is because if your skin is overproducing oil, if you give it the moisture instead, your skin can kind of back off and say, oh, we got this under control, we don't need to produce as much. So that can be very helpful. 
Now, coconut oil has been seen as a moisturizer, but it doesn't actually penetrate the skin. It really just sits on top. So if one were to try to use coconut oil, it might be helpful for very dry skin, dry plus acne prone, or if you have another moisturizer or a serum that penetrates deeper, the coconut oil could try to sit on top and kind of seal everything in. But overall, it is not the best out there but it's not as bad as we once thought. If you really want to use an oil in your skincare, there are many other oils on the market that are going to be more effective, such as jojoba oil, such as squalene, such as rosehip oil or sweet almond oil, that have a better balance for our skin and have shown not to disrupt barrier function. Again, how our skin actually works. So coconut oil isn't a miracle, but it's also not guaranteed to break you out. In my personal life, I use coconut oil to remove my makeup. It is amazing at removing makeup because it actually breaks down the particles that could get lodged in the skin. The thing is that I always use a regular acne cleanser to remove this after so the coconut oil doesn't sit on me. Now, I have used compounds like coconut cream kind of as a makeshift primer, which helps makeup stay on longer. That's something I've done, and so far my skin is pretty okay with it. But for the average acne sufferer, if you have dry skin and acne, it's something you could try, but why not go for a different oil instead? And if you have oily skin, you probably want to choose something that's going to work a little bit better. And obviously, if you are allergic to coconuts, or if you have used coconut oil on your skin and it broke you out, then it's not for you. But what is interesting is that you might be using products right now that have derivatives of coconut that you didn't even know about. I want you to go turn over your foundation. Do you see caprylic triglyceride anywhere on there? Caprylic triglyceride is actually derived from coconut oil, and it's usually mixed with water. Now, caprylic triglyceride is not the same as coconut oil, but it does have some similarities, and it's in a ton of foundations. So if you've been using a foundation that has this ingredient and you haven't broken out, Maybe coconut oil is not that bad for you, or maybe your skin is not as sensitive to it as you might have thought. Or if you know that coconut oil gives you issues and you see the caprylic triglyceride on the foundation that breaks you out the most, your skin might be sensitive to it. I know that buzzwords and trends are interesting, but remember that they're not always there for us. A lot of marketers put them in just to sell more products. And at the end of the day, when it comes to coconut oil, if you're going to use it, use the real stuff, not a combined product but don't waste your money. There's other oils out there that are going to be more beneficial for your skin. If you wanna learn how to read your cosmetic labels the right way, you can watch that video here. And if you wanna see how I use coconut oil in my skincare routine, you can watch that here. Hit subscribe and the ding dong bell for more videos about acne and skincare, and hit the thumb if you learned a little something, preferably the up one. Always remember to be beautiful inside and out, and I cannot wait to see you in the next video. <laughs> Love you guys.